First of all, to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. The Gospel of John we just heard today is taken from what is known as the farewell discourse or the Last Supper discourse. Jesus reminds the disciples that after he dies, after he leaves the earth, he will still be with them. He explains how he will remain with them, but he also instructs the disciples how to remain in his love. Christ talks about what it means to love. I think, you know, we use that word love a lot, especially in the English language. We can often mix our understanding of love with the emotions that we feel. We can say we you know, love pizza or we love chocolate, we love sunsets, we love our family, you love your husband, you love your wife. But in all those cases, the sense and understanding of love is a little bit different. But if we ever need a reminder of what love truly looks like, I always love going to St. Paul's letter to the Romans as he says and reminds us, love is patient, love is kind, It is not envy, it is not boast, it is not proud, it is not self-seeking. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. But as we see in the gospel, Jesus also links obedience to love. While that may seem odd, think about what obedience is. It is a way of submitting ourselves, of giving of ourselves to another. It is a self-gift. We love the Lord by giving ourselves in obedience. Not just simply to say I love you, but to show it through our actions. To remain in love is, means keeping his commandments. You know, in the church we talk a lot about the love of God. And many other religions and philosophies will talk about the love of God as well. But for others, love is something that God does It's one of his attributes. But in Christianity, love is unique in the sense that loving isn't just something that God does, but it is, in fact, who God is. God doesn't just love, but God is love itself. The gospel today leaves us with two fundamental truths. And God loves you, that you are not alone, you are not orphans, and that we are invited to participate in God's love. And I think in a beautiful way, you know, this, these readings coincide with Mother's Day. Because after all, it is through the love of a mother, our mothers, that we first experience the love of God. From the very start, being a mother, bringing life into the world, is, it is an expression of that self-giving. And the church teaches that parents are the first preachers of the gospel. Our faith and our understanding of God's love begins in the home. In my own experience, I can honestly say that if it wasn't for my mother, I wouldn't be here today. My mom sacrificed so much for me. She fed me when I was hungry. She was there to hug me when I was sad. She was there to pick me up when I fell down. But above all, she made sure that I felt loved. But from all the things I would say that my mother gave me and all the things that my mother sacrificed for me, I would say the greatest gift that she gave me was my faith. I wouldn't be here without it. She taught me how to pray. She dragged me to church on Sundays. She forced me to pray the rosary every once in a while and took me to adoration. I knew that my mother loved me, and I knew that God was part of that as well. It was because I experienced the love of my mother that I was better able to understand what it meant to say, God loves me too. But as we mentioned before, love of God is also linked to obedience, of following his will. But do we make the effort to follow the Lord in our life? Do we take the time to discern God's will and follow him? Now, of course, as a vocation director, I'm also here to talk about vocations. How do we discern God's will in our life? How do we know when and how to follow him? Now, out of curiosity, raise your hand if you heard that word vocation before or actually know what it means to discern a vocation. Pretty good. Now, I'll be honest with you. Growing up, I never heard that. And it wasn't until later on in my life when I really understood what it meant to discern a vocation. 
But first of all, that word vocation, it primarily means a call. Both Pope John Paul II and Pope Francis explain that there is one primary vocation that we all have. It is the calling to holiness. No matter where you are in your life, no matter how old or how young, you are called to be holy. But next we look at how are we called to live out that holiness? What does it look like? Maybe it is through the married life, the single life, the priesthood, or the religious life. Discernment then is the process of discovering God's will in our life. How is God calling you to holiness? Discernment, though, begins, I would say, by first recognizing simply that love of God in your life. Once we come to recognize the love of God in a personal way, then we are better able to share that love with one another. So when we talk about vocation, we are talking about how God is calling each one of us to model the love of God in our own life. How is God calling you to love? Maybe that is through the married life, through your partner. Maybe it's through the vocation to the religious life or even the priesthood. But if you want to discover God's will in your life and how God is calling you to holiness, we need to spend time in prayer. There's no shortcut. There's no other way around it. We need to spend time in prayer. I remember years ago when I was in college, I was thinking about, you know, what I was going to do next in my life. I was going to UCSD for my undergraduate, and at the time, everything was going pretty well. I was doing great in school. I had a great job. I was surrounded by a loving family and friends. But in the midst of it all, I realized that there was something missing. The one prayer that I often prayed during that time, and maybe it's a prayer you prayed as well, was, God, give me some peace in my life. God, give me a sense of peace. And I didn't know exactly what that meant at the time, but I knew I didn't have it. And so I went in search of that peace. I began getting more involved in the life of the church and deepening my understanding of the faith. Now, I grew up Catholic, but for the most part, I took my faith for granted. So my discernment to the priesthood began first by simply recognizing that love of God and how it had always been there in my life. Even in the moments when I chose to ignore God or turn my back on him, he was there with me. And after a lot of prayer and a lot of tears as well, I finally made the decision to enter into seminary. And for the first time in my life, I got that sense of peace that I had been praying for. I will say this to every young man who is out here today, to at least consider the priesthood, and for any women to consider the religious life. And I would say, do not let it be a passing thought either. And I think there's so many young people who might think about the priesthood or the religious life and just simply say, no, God isn't calling me there. And that was certainly my response. No, God wants me to have a family. God wants me to to have this career. But how do you know that? How do we know that if we don't take it to prayer, if we don't spend time discerning God's will in our life? I think somehow we think we're able to discern God's will in a matter of of seconds. That's not where God is calling me. But again, we need to spend time in prayer. Is that our plan or is that God's plan for us? Do not be afraid of where God is calling you either. The challenge, of course, begins simply by recognizing how God is working in our life, how God continues to work through us to be that instrument of love in the world. It begins by recognizing his love and mercy, that he is always with us. For parents, I especially ask you to pray for vocations. There's something we can all do. Again, it is to pray. I encourage you to have that conversations with your sons about the priesthood or your daughters about the religious life. Be a model of faith to them. Again, a child comes to know the love of God first and foremost through the love of their parents. If your faith isn't important, chances are it won't be important to your children either. But I ask you to have that conversation with them and allow them that opportunity to discern God's will. You know, I often have parents who come up and say, oh yes, we're praying for vocations. You know, we hope there's more men and and women who enter into the religious life. I say, well, what about your son or daughter? Oh no, not my son, not my daughter. You know, somebody else. But I say, don't take that opportunity away from your children to discern where God is calling them. Pray as a family. Pray for more priests and religious. 
If we turn to God in prayer with humble hearts, God will always lift us up and show us the way. Our vocations are not meant to be a mystery to us. If we dedicate time to discerning God's will in our life, he will always show us the way. This Easter season is a perfect time to sit and pray, to spend time with the Lord, to listen to where he is calling you, to ask that question, how is God calling me to live a life of holiness? How is God calling me to love?